Hello Simmers, this is your captain speaking. It's been a while since we've had a video and so um, those of you who have been watching may wonder if uh, we were still operating. Well, we are, but uh, it has slowed down a little bit in the past uh, several weeks or months. And uh, But today we're going to start a new activity and uh, hopefully that will uh, pique some interest and uh, maybe uh, show some things that will be of interest to our viewers. I've added some new software. Let's go to the marketplace and uh, take a look at this. I've added the uh, software from uh, I think it's Flight Academy, FS Academy called Jetliner and uh, Jetliner is an application that uh, adds some so-called bush trips to the uh, simulator that will give some instructions on how to fly a jet. Uh, that has been something that I have been interested in for a little while now but I uh, had difficulty finding uh, resources that would uh, give uh, good information about it. But uh, in the marketplace, it talks about Jetliner and gives this, this description. Uh, there is a PDF file at fsacademy.co.uk slash jetliner that you can download for free that uh, gives information about uh, this application, also gives some good information about uh, the components uh, in a jet, and uh, you can learn a bit about jet liners. Uh, you can learn about flying jets just from that. Uh, this application creates some bush trips that uh, are described here as missions, a step-by-step -step guide for uh, the Airbus. And uh, the missions that are uh, set forth within it are to taxi out, take off, climb, cruise, descent, approach, taxi in. There is an engine failure uh, trip. There is an engine emergency descent trip, RTO. I guess you'll have to go <laughs> to the, uh, uh, in the, the software to find out what RTO is. I certainly will. Uh, it talks about manual hand handling and then it provides a final challenge as the Jetliner 12 bush trip to demonstrate your proficiency at handling big jet by combining what you've learned into a complex departure from uh, the, uh, from Gibraltar. And I think for what I'd like to do is to go through uh, at least some of these bush trips and provide uh, a view of how these uh, bush trips act and what is taught within them and so on. The first one is the taxi out. I've done this actually uh, two or three times already. Uh, I'm sure that I will probably uh, do them several times, each of them, so that I can get more and more familiar with uh, uh, flying the jet. Let's go ahead and load up Jetliner of the first bush trip and uh, we'll be there in just a moment. Okay, so here we are at Gatwick. On the tarmac, we have been pushed out. You'll hear just a moment ago, uh, well, in a moment, uh, it, will, it, it will point out that we have already been pushed out and is just waiting on us to start the engines and uh, get ready to taxi down to the end 
uh, of the runway. Uh, the PDF file looks like this, and uh, it gives all the instructions that you need for uh, using the software and uh, so on. Uh, one of the best things that I like about it is that it gives a really good description of the flight deck starting on page 7. And then for each of the bush trips, there is a section here uh, providing a little bit more information about what, what the trip is about and how to uh, uh, go through it. One of the things that it points out is that you want to be careful that when you operate this, that you don't pause the, uh, uh, the simulator that you just allow it to continue to go. The simulator uses some time uh, some timed uh, activities and some activities that are based on events. And pausing the simulator will uh, get some of those uh, activities out of sync. And uh, then when, once that happens, uh, things don't work very well. Go ahead and get in the cockpit and uh, see how this works. This is FS Academy Jetliner. We're going to introduce you to airline operations step by step, starting with a complete short haul flight. We're in the A320neo and have just finished our pushback here at London Gatwick, bound for Barcelona. Make sure that the APU is running and we'll talk about jet engines. Now it doesn't actually tell us how to make uh, the APU run. Up here at the objectives, it tells you what you need to do. But you're going to have to get look into the uh, PDF file at the uh, flight deck, find out where things are at, and, uh, and do your best in that way. Uh, but it will wait for you to do this, and once you figure out what you're doing, then you'll see that there's a little start button here under APU, and we'll click start. The A320 thrust levers have a set of detents that you'll need to be familiar with. Move the levers all the way forward to the toga position. And I'll use my uh, uh, thrust quadrant for that. This is the toga detent, which stands for take off, go around. This setting will give maximum power when required for takeoff on a short runway or to initiate a go-around. It would be hard on the engines and use a lot of fuel if we used maximum power for every takeoff. So instead we use a reduced thrust setting known as flex. Move the levers back a little into the flex MCT detent. This is the flex MCT detent. Flex is a reduced takeoff thrust setting when maximum power isn't needed, saving fuel and engine wear. MCT stands for Maximum Continuous Thrust. Whilst TOGA provides full power, keeping the engines at 100% thrust for longer than about 5 to 10 minutes can cause excessive wear and damage. MCT is a slightly reduced power setting but it can be set for an unlimited time without fear of overstressing the engines. Here in the flex detent is where we'll set the levers for today's takeoff from Gatwick. Move the levers back another notch to the climb detent. So we move it back, following the instructions. Unlike in a Boeing aircraft, Airbus thrust levers do not move in response to the auto thrust. Instead, the levers are manually placed into the climb detent shortly after takeoff, where they will remain for the majority of the flight. The auto thrust can control engine power as needed, with the levers remaining in the climb detent the entire time. 
Finally, bring the levers all the way back to idle. And that's all the way back to the, uh, the start this of This is the idle detent, where the engines are at their minimum power. In the final moments before touchdown, you'll move the levers here to reduce thrust for landing, and this will automatically disengage the autothrust system. This is also the position used for starting the engines. Set the engine mode selector to start. And of course, uh, it doesn't tell you anything about where this is at. You have to find that yourself. But it happens to be right here. And we want to move this knob to the right. Now set the engine one master switch to on. Here's the engine one master switch. And we're going to go back and look at these heat gas. A jet engine typically has two main fans at the front of the engine, one big and one small, known as N1 and N2. N2. Each fan is connected via a shaft to their own set of turbine blades at the back of the engine. The N2 fan is the smaller of the two and starts turning first. Once it gains speed, the air it moves gets pushed over the turbine blades for the N1 fan, causing it to spin. Engines are now running, so we'll perform the after start flow. And the after start flow is uh, over here on the right, and just listen to it as in, uh, objectives. Just read those off and do each one of these things. First, we set the engine mode select to normal, and that's back here where it was set to start. We'll set it to normal, and it turns green and disappears. We want to turn the APU bleed off, that back up here at the ceiling. And there's the APU bleed. Turn that off. Now we want to turn the APU master off. APU master is this switch right here. It sets that off. The spoilers arm, that might be difficult to find, but if you look back down here, at the bottom, you'll see this uh, uh, this handle over here that says speed brake over here on the left. And to arm the spoilers, you take this and pull it up. And you'll see a little white section there. And that tells you that the spoilers have been armed. And then the final thing is to uh, set the flaps to the first uh, setting. Now that we've completed the flow actions, we complete the after-start checklist. Anti-ice off. All this is e automatic. status checked. Pitch trim set. Rudder trim zero. After-start checklist complete. 
Just like on a small aircraft, we check the flight controls for full and free movement before departure, starting with the ailerons. And so I use my uh, flight controls for this. Ailerons for full left. left. Ailerons full right. Full right. Neutral. Elevator full, full up. up. Elevator full, full down. down. Neutral. Rudder full left. Rudder full left. Rudder full, full right. right. Neutral. Neutral. Great. The flight controls look good. Jetliner 488, clearance available. Ready to copy, Jetliner 488. Jetliner 488, cleared to Barcelona via Novma 1 X-ray, runway 26 left, altitude 5,000 feet, squawk 7402. Jetliner 488, cleared to Barcelona, Novma 1 X-ray, 26 left, altitude 5,000, squawking 7402. Jetliner 488, read back correct, report ready for taxi. We've just received our ATC ready to clear. We're departing via the Novma 1 X ray departure from runway 26 left, climbing to an initial stop altitude of 5,000 feet, which is set. And the transponder is We're set. We're ready to go. Let's request taxi clearance. Jetliner 488, request taxi. Jetliner 488, taxi to hold short runway 26 left via Papa Alpha Sierra, holding point Alpha 2. Papa Alpha Sierra, holding short 26 left at Alpha 2, Jetliner 488. ATC have given us a taxi clearance to holding point Alpha 2. That's pretty much the full length for runway 26 left. Clear left side, clear right side, turn on the taxi light, release the parking brake, and we'll get going. All right, before we do that, let me just show you um, the help that it provides here for the taxiing on this. Because it is a little bit confusing if uh, you don't uh, pay attention to this. Uh, I'm finding that now, and I'll pull it over. Just a second when I get to it. All right, here we go. Taxi route is going to take us along uh, uh, I think it's Alpha that we start off on and then we turn on to Papa and left here at the end of Papa. Then we turn left at Alpha Sierra and we stop right here. This is where Alpha 2 begins. And you want to be careful that you get all the way down here to the end of Pop before you turn left. Uh, it's a little confusing there. If you turn left here, and there is a uh, there is another uh, taxiway right here, then uh, it'll never tell you to stop when you get to Alpha 2. So we want to make sure. Let's do what it tells us here. I turn the taxi light on. The lights are here. Up, uh, here we go. Lights are here at the front. And we've got our beacon already on. We're going to turn our taxi light on. And we turn our parking brake off down here. Taxi ahead and turn right at the end onto taxiway Papa, then follow Papa around to the left onto Alpha Sierra to hold short at Alpha 2. Right, here we go. Use only the minimum power you need to taxi at about 10 to 15 knots as we're making some sharp turns. Brakes checked. 
Keep on taxiing and take the next rise onto Papa. Not in a hurry. Turn right here and follow Papa to the end, where we'll turn left to Alpha Sierra. Whilst taxiing, we run through the PEDS check, which is a brief recap of our departure. Performance, departing from Alpha Sierra for 26 left, as expected. Engine out, if we have an engine failure, at 1,700 feet, we would turn left to Willow. Departure. Novma 1 X-ray, runway 26 left, is on our clearance and in the FMGC. Stop altitude, 5,000 feet from ATC. This is where Papa turns a little bit to the left. You want to make sure that you follow the right uh, line here. I tried this first one the uh, other day and it didn't get me where I needed to be. You need to go almost all the way to uh, this uh, holding point up here before you turn left. This is Alpha 2, come to a stop here. Great, now set the parking brake. Now we're at the halting point, we'll complete the before takeoff checklist. Flight controls checked. Briefing confirmed. Flap setting config one. FMA and takeoff data V1 blue, V2 magenta, climb nav 5000 blue, 1 FT2 flex. There's some information I want to learn set. about that doesn't make any sense to me. ECAM right memo takeoff no blue. EFB stowed and disconnected. Down to the line. Okay, we've completed our checks down to the line on the checklist. We continue below the line once we're cleared for line-up. We'll return once the cabin crew reports that the cabin is secured for takeoff. And I assume that some of this information will be found within the PDF file. And uh, so I'll go through that and study that uh, in order to prepare for the next uh, bush trip. But there we have uh, the first bush trip, Jetliner 01 taxi, and uh, we hope that you have enjoyed this video, and you'll come back to see other videos in the near future.